Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Red Bull Ring. It's round six of the DTM Trophy 2022. And while we will indeed have races 11 and 12 of the season of 14, and the question is, will Tim Heinemann be in a position to claim his second ever DTM Trophy Championship by the end of this weekend? Or will Colin Karasani, Taya Uverhaus, and maybe even Thiago Vivacqua put themselves in a position to maybe challenge Tim? Tim yesterday was actually the slowest in free practice too. I went to chat with him and, well, he said the same as what he said last time out at Spa. He doesn't have a car that can win, unfortunately, this weekend. But then at Spa, he went and won race number two. So take what Tim says with a pinch of salt, or is he being truthful this time? Who knows? But everybody in the paddock knows that Tim loves a sandbag. Uh, but there is indeed a red flag out currently because we have got a puncture. Uh, this is Ronnie Shear, who is racing in the DTM Classic DRM Cup. Uh, and they stopped during the previous session. So there's a puncture there, just pulled off the circuit. Uh, we actually had a red flag for a, another BMW M1 Pro car who binned it into a wall. So, yeah, a little bit of a delay this morning. So once that car's recovered, I think we can get going here. But this is the first chance for the DTM Trophy drivers to earn points. Three points for P1, two points for P2, and one point for P3. And if you're Colin Karasani, if you're Teo Uverhaus, if you're Thiago Vivacqua, this is the most important qualifying session of the season. You can ill afford Tim Heinemann to go out there and pick up even more points. He currently leads the championship by 60 points. That is just yeah if he leads by 60 points but come the end of tomorrow he is officially our champion you can only score 58 points in a weekend uh, so yeah it's uh it's basically in tim's hands to lose at this stage of the championship i hope i find you well wherever you're watching from around the world let me know where you're watching from get yourselves involved in the youtube chat i'm, I'm watching right now if you're watching on television around the world you can tweet me at actrolvision on twitter or indeed on instagram you can send me a message as well if you have any questions uh so yeah it's uh, all good for you guys getting involved always nice to keep it nice and interactive there is our championship leader of course winner from season number one when he was racing in the mercedes amg and this season in that toyota looking very very strong at the front you can see almeida who was second fastest yesterday in free practice two and his teammate cal helper was fastest so those two are the two really to watch out for AMG looks pretty strong here. Uh, Alexandre Papadopoulos, keep an eye out for Papadopoulos. Again, getting faster and faster and faster as the season progresses. Yesterday, uh, it says he's got a new setup engineer and they basically the car's like a completely different monster to what it was at the start of the season he's having to drive the car differently but he is finding his feet with it he says it's a uh, you know he's not really driving the car as aggressively as he once was um but it's hard for him to not drive like that so yeah he's just figuring stuff out and he's becoming very very quick indeed so it's all working out right now for Papadopoulos maybe a little bit too late of course not going to make a championship run but at least going to mix it in the points during the rest of this season again we're just waiting for the pro car here of Ronnie Shear to be taken off the circuit and then we can safely get on with the DTM trophy session where's everyone watching from around the world then let me know let me know in the chat put your put your country flags in there maybe you're supporting a specific driver maybe you're not but yeah let us know Let us know. So I've just realized I was actually looking at the wrong chat, ladies and gentlemen. I was looking at the German chat, so not the uh, English one. So I will indeed get back to you. Who's watching this? We've got Oxia, Sam Bird, Spazo as well. Lots of familiar names, which is great to see. But yeah, welcome aboard, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning as well. Maybe it's evening for some of you as well. We've got uh, Jonas Gruber supporting Nick and Moritz. Uh, he's from Germany as well. We've got uh, Oxia from Lyon. Uh, Sandberg watching from Australia. Uh, Bav, welcome. How you doing? Shivam dear, how you doing? You okay? That's the home in the yellow SRT. <laughs> Cheap Patel there supporting Alexandre Papadopoulos as well. Good to see. Uh, Texas, nice. Lots of BMWs here. That's for sure there, uh, Oxia. You're at a Turn 10 Grandstand. Oh, David, how you doing, mate? I saw you yesterday. <laughs> Hopefully you're well, bud. Hopefully you're well. I'll tell you what, I could have done with using that scooter yesterday. It's you all sprite and fit and young using a scooter as me walking up the hill. Yeah, you know, priorities and all that. But what? 
You know, you're a superstar, right? Get the superstar VIP treatment. Spaceo watching from Norway as well. Elisa watching from Melbourne. The Ricky Capo Club. Ricky's family supporting. The family get bigger and bigger, Tony, every single time. It's a clan at this point. It's cold. <laughs> I'm in a shirt and shorts, mate. It's not that cold. It's beautiful weather. Come say hello later on. So, yeah, we're just waiting for the pro car to indeed be removed. And then we're good to go. 20 minutes here for our qualifying session. And like I mentioned before, there are points on offer. Three points for P1, two points for P2, and indeed one point for P3. Alfred Dion from Cape Town, welcome. George Maltesinio supporting Rodrigo as well. Harco, the leader of the Sophie Hoffman fan club, of course, here in the chat, here every time. We love to see it. And remember, we have our first race later on today as well. So if you don't know where to go and watch that, basically, the stream is already queued up. So you can go to the DTM, um, the DTM YouTube page, if you're watching on YouTube right now, and you can click the notification, and 30 minutes before the race, it'll ping up on your phone or on your computer and go, oh, come and watch the race. So you should absolutely do that. If you're watching on television, so wherever you're watching right now on television, it will be live at uh, 3 p.m., or sorry, 2 p.m. local time. No, it's 3 p.m. 3.15 local time, 2.15 p.m. in the UK. Confusing time zones. So again, just waiting for the green light here. And then it is just 20 minutes dash. I just saw that Cus Team Bernard mechanic there look very similar to Carlos Sainz. How you doing, Ricky? Cameron Karasani supporting Colin, of course. You reckon Gregor's going to get P2, Sam Bird? You want to see a Porsche 1 2 then? There's lots of jumpers, lots of scarves today. On the big screen, is that a smile? They know? No, there's Uber House. The youngest ever DTM participant raced in DTM. Of course, at the Nürburgring. The youngest ever driver to lead a DTM race as well. But it is just DTM trophy duty. If he is to win this championship, it's more than likely going to take four wins from four from this point onwards. But the 17-year-old is in with a shout, that's for sure. Yeah, Daniel, I will be at the racetrack. So you can always come and say hello. I'll be the sole person at the racetrack in shorts. Flapjack, sit back, relax, get some snacks, get a drink, and enjoy. Because this will be a wild ride in qualifying. Anybody can get pole position. It is really that close. It's different every single time. And well, shout out to the cameraman who is on the top there of that extended crane. That is absolutely a big no from me. Massive respect. I do not well, nope, no thank you. So yeah, just still awaiting the session two and D start. Session is delayed officially. Everybody starting to lose their adrenaline. This is not good for drivers. Drivers get themselves so hemped up for a qualifying session like this. And the adrenaline is a huge part of getting the maximum out of a car. Well, this is a good sign. Normally, when the, car pa oh, the camera pans out to this, it means that the session is relatively close to getting going. Alexander Duke, good morning to you. What's the temperature over in Austria? Australia? Oh, sorry, in Austria. Uh, perfect for me. Um, I'm not too sure exactly what the temperature is. I reckon it may be about I don't know, 10, 11 degrees this morning, which is lovely. And there is your championship leader, of course, number 90, Tim Heinemann. Racing for Toyota Gazoo Racing Germany, powered by Ring Racing, the longest team name in the history of motorsport. Folev in the number five, head of the four FK performance cars. 
him and Jordan Wallace were very surprising yesterday in terms of their pace. They've been getting faster and faster, very similarly to Papadopoulos, which makes the battle for kind of, I don't know, sixth down to tenth, those points, very interesting. There's a lot of drivers scrapping for those points now. The championship or the races are looking very different in terms of finishing positions as they did at the start of the season. As we see a lovely shot here, lots of people already on the beers this morning as I came to the track, 8 a.m. on the beers. Nothing but respect. Lots of people here already. We're expecting huge crowds here this weekend. And if you want to come and get involved, you know where we are. There we are, crowd. There's some waves, there's some points, there's some smiles. And we are now green flag. Qualifying has begun here, then, ladies and gentlemen. 20 minutes to get your fastest lap times in. Bavesh Patel saying the entire Toyota team name should be on a DTM weekend bingo card. Yep, I always try and get it, the whole name in at least once. So off out onto the track they will go. The only cars who haven't decided to go out this early are Folev, Lona, Fulgencio, Cowhelper, Papadopoulos, Wallace and Vivacqua. Everybody else has gone out. Even the Porsches have gone out. They never go out early in a session. They're trying something different, that's for sure. Vivacqua now makes his way out of the pits. And all of the FK performance team are sticking around. And this is kind of what they do. The FK performance team have done this season after season. With Ben Green and Ben Tuck in the first season. With Ben Green last season, it's kind of their strategy. Of course, they won the championship last season. So you don't ever go against what FK performance are able to do. So who will come out on top here? Who will get the, the first points of the weekend? 29 points available today. Three points for qualifying, P1. One point for fastest lap in the race. And 25 points for winning the race. So 29 points is your maximum today. And there are a few drivers that absolutely need those points. Again, I will just go through the Drivers' Championship. Tim Heineman leads with 178 points. Uh, he leads Karasani by 60 points. So... A maximum race weekend here for Karasani of 58. And indeed, Tim Heineman scoring zero would still have Tim Heineman leading the championship going in to the Hockenheim ring. Although Tim Heineman was the slowest car in, in practice yesterday as he's trying now to split the two Porsches. And the Porsches are having absolutely none of it there. Capo squeezing him onto the apex, Tim flashing the lights. And I think the Porsches are trying to use each other here. Daniel Gregor gets out of the way. And Capo then looking to set a flyer as soon as he possibly can. Running a little bit wide there on the exit of turn number one. And Tim Heineman is going to get a lovely run here. And try and make something work. Up in towards turn number three. Uverhaus is one point further back from Karasani. Again, they both need a massive, massive weekend. Tiago Vivacqua then on 92 points is a huge old margin behind. 86 points behind. So again any one of those drivers need to win both races or maybe even all four to be a champion this season and then you've got Eduard Kalhalper and Daniel Gregor the only drivers that are in the hunt to win this championship but they're a little bit too far back I think 71 points and 70 points respectively so six drivers can still win the championship realistically I would say there's only three so there's only four races to go oh, tough to look past Tim Heinemann that is for sure So there is Colin Karasani. Did not have a good time out last time. Still relaxed though, still got a smile on his face. Big opportunity. Every single race day is an opportunity to put things right. Tim Heineman just gone purple, purple. You can tell now why he wants to get to the front here. Just wants to get as many laps as possible. Did not look comfortable during practice yesterday. But today is a different day. Hearing the grunt of that BMW as we head down towards the final two corners. And now Maida puts the first time in, in the 144.110. Tim Heineman now 40.504. Those times will not be anywhere near the pole position later on, that is for sure. Around the final corner we will go. You can see actually behind Karasani is Lewis Henkefen with a new car. He's got a new BMW this weekend because the incident that he had 
at Spa on the exit of turn number one, unfortunately rendered the other one done. So they've had to get a new one in, new livery as well. So here's Heinemann onto the curbing there. There's a lot of, yeah, a lot of oil down there because of the incident we had in the classic qualifying. And well, Tim found out the hard way there. Tiago Vivacqua moves up to P3. Again, times aren't really that representative. Uh, Heinemann, green through sector number one. Karasani, purple through sector number one. Almeida, green through sector number one. So people starting to get that heat into their tyres. Lewis Henkefen, green, of course, as well. Hoffman, 24.97, is green as well. But has Heinemann been bluffing once again, or is the Toyota genuinely struggling this weekend? Heinemann, purple through sector two. I'm not sure. I'm not sure he's struggling as much as, we, as he's been saying, to be honest. Heading down towards that final corner. And Heinemann, I think, is about to take provisional pole, keeping two wheels on the curbing there on the exit of the final corner. And Almeida momentarily goes up to P1, but I think Heinemann is about to retake it. He does. A 38.896 at the times. Now tumbling. Vivacqua now purple through sector number one. Hoffman is green, green here. Hoffman on an absolute flyer, to be honest. Karasani, Henkefend all going faster here as well. You can see that Hoffman is being let go there by Henkefend. And across the line then for Hoffman, and it's P3. So P3. Henkefend momentarily went up to P3. Vivacqua, whose middle sector has not been great here. Heinemann once again. Purple. The two Porsches have come into the pits again. Hanker is yet to come out. Regal is out there as well. P7 as it stands, but we know Regal will wait right till the last opportunity to put the fastest lap in. Hoffman, purple through sector number one. Hoffman looking very quick. Hoffman's been a little bit despondent over the last uh, few rounds. Finding it a little bit difficult, but I tell you what, she has looked super fast this weekend. The fastest all season, for sure. As Heinemann now goes purple through sector number two. And Rodriguez Almeida, again, just trying to get some heat into the tyres. Jordan Wallace has put a lap time in, but it's about 26 seconds off, so you wouldn't be worried, too worried about that one. Uh, Moritz Lona up to P7. Again, it's just all about getting some reps in, feeling comfortable as Hoffman here is purple and purple. And around a second to last corner. Henkefen's going to come into the pits. Thiago Vivacqua takes the purple middle sector now as well. I think Hoffman might be about to put this on provisional pole here. Across the line we will go. And it is provisional pole then for Hoffman. He won 38.718. You have to use the curbs here, Flapjack, if you want to get maximum time. It's the nature of the circuit. Tiago Vivacqua, I think, might be about to take provisional pole as well here. It might be a 1-2 here for Audi and the Heidelberg Sport team. And there we go, it is. It's not by a lot, but it's by enough. That's the big point here. Heinemann, Almeida, Henkefend all in the pits. Karasani in the pits. Cal Halper is on an outlap now, starting a flyer. Gregor, Capo, they're both on an outlap here. About to start a flyer as well. Uverhaus is on a flyer. Hanker is out on an outlap and will be about to start a flyer as well. So the session now nearly at the halfway point as Hoffman goes green once again. I think Vivacqua might be about to go purple. There we go. So Vivacqua has gone purple. The Audi starting to find their footing this weekend. Vivacqua, of course, already with many a podium this season as it stands. Five podiums in total. Oh, sorry, should I say six? One second. He's got himself five third positions this season. Definitely fast enough to get a P1. Will Thiago Vivacco get that P1 during this season? Hoffman, faster through sector number two once again. Vivacqua, purple, purple. Papadopoulos up to P8. 4.2 seconds off the pace. Again, not really going to set the world alight. 
at this stage as Hoffman does go faster within half a tenth now of her teammate. But Vivacqua is about to absolutely blow that time out of the water here. It's purple, purple. Final corner to go. Runs it out onto the curbing there and actually seems pretty conservative on the exit of the final corner here. Across the line then for the number 31. It's P1 and now it's by over half a second. So Thiago Vivacqua has just thrown down the challenge. Now it's up to everybody else to accept it. Uh, what is the weather going to be this weekend? Well, the weather is beautiful today and it's set to be beautiful all weekend until tomorrow. Tomorrow it's supposed to rain. But then again, it said, it said that at the Nürburgring and the Nürburgring wasn't as bad as it was uh, as it was made out. And the same with Spa. It was supposed to be really bad weather at Spa and it just wasn't as bad. As Thiago Vivac was going quicker again, by the way. Purple sector one for him. Moritz Lona and Fulgencio both going green, green, green. Heinemann now on an outlap, Almeida on an outlap here. Capo puts in a lap time. Hanker up to P4. Uh, what about Daniel Gregor? The form driver in the championship, bar Tim Heinemann, is Daniel Gregor, yet to put a lap time in. Under a bit of pressure here. Jordan Wallace now 1.9 off of the pace here. Heinemann moves up into fourth or down to fifth position now as Uberhaus goes up to third. Hoffman, purple through sector number two. Vivacqua, purple, purple. Vivacqua is just finding more and more time. I'm not sure if these two are going to come into the pits here. It might be a case of they just keep doing laps. Keep doing laps. This might be the strategy. Because I think the track's going to drop off. I, I'm pretty sure the track will drop off today. It's one of those circuits where it doesn't necessarily get faster as the session goes on. Tiago Vivacqua then just looks so comfortable. The laps do not look like he's pushing the limits of this car, but yet seems to be finding more and more time. Vivacqua, even faster again, six more tenths of a second found. And it's now eight tenths of a second faster than teammate Sophie Hoffman. But more importantly, 1.3 seconds faster than everybody else. Hoffman now has just gone purple through sector one. So apparently, Elias, it's supposed to rain all day tomorrow. Uh, and the race starts at uh, 3.15 in the afternoon local time. In the UK, it'll be 2.15 p.m. And again, it's on the DTM YouTube channel, or if you're watching on television right now, you can indeed watch it on exactly the same channel as you're watching qualifying right now. Thiago Vivacqua, number 31, purple through sector one again. I'm not sure how much weight these lap times are going to hold by the end of this session, but they look quick. Hanker, Nick Hanker up to a top three then. The whole field was separated by 1.4 seconds yesterday, so I'm expecting it to be a very similar case by the end of this session as well. So we're heading then towards the ending of this qualifying. So seven minutes, 40 seconds to go. Thiago Vivacqua still going faster here. Purple, purple. Around the final corner, we will go. And will Vivacqua improve? I think he's going to. How much by? As Hoffman has improved again. Vivacqua has gone a little bit faster. So tickled a bit of time there off the time. Seven minutes left on the clock, then Vivacqua. 137.4 as we see Capo ooh, off into the gravel there and continually going into the gravel and that is not good for those tyres and with only one set of tyres yeah that's actually quite clever realising that if you turn right there you're going to be in some, some serious trouble and skates off then to the left hand side and that might that might upend the advancements of Capo So Karasani just gone up to P2. <laughs> well, here we go. Daniel Gregor went up to P2 momentarily. Now Karasani up to P2. The times are now starting to tumble here. Where's Heinemann in all of this? Well, he's P11. So right now, you would say that he is genuinely struggling here. Tiago Vivacqua, though, on provisional pole. Car five, lap time deleted. Folev for track limits at turn number nine. Tiago Vivacqua, green and now purple through sector number two. Are we potentially 
going to see Vivacqua improve on that time. Could we see a 36 today in this session? As Karasani now is starting to fly, he needs a big weekend, and he's now producing big sector times. Across the line for Vivacqua, is it going to be even faster? Well, it is. It is a lot faster. It's another two tenths of a second, but Karasani is the one to watch out for. Daniel Gregor, by the way, is green, green. Tim Heinemann's not green through sector number two. And will we see Tim Heinemann improve on his time? I'm not sure we will. It's P11. It's 1.4 seconds away. He is genuinely struggling. Colin Karasani through sector two. It's green. Cal Halper now up onto the front row provisionally here. It's Daniel Gregor, form driver of the second half of this season for sure. It's about to come across the line here. How quick is it going to be? It's green, green so far. And across the line then for Daniel Gregor. It's good enough for a provisional front row start. Colin Karasani now, the next driver to come through. Nick Hanker is actually green, green as well. Karasani, though, with that purple first sector. Can he go? Provisional pole himself. Across the line then for Hanker. Hanker fifth. Karasani is going to, what, well, second by six thousandths of a second. There is lap times here then for the Dutchman. Can Karasani find that magic, though? He needs the maximum three points here. But just by getting second, he will cut the championship lead down to 56. And he needs to start cutting at Heinemann. So very interesting here. Hoffman, who was on the front row for a, for a fair old chunk of time, is coming across the line here and will start with four minutes to go. Maybe their a third, fourth from last attempt. As Vivacqua is coming into the pits here. Is that session done here for Thiago Vivacqua? Does he think he's done enough? That's the big question. This might be a risky strategy here, but also the tyres are not going to be favourable because he's done the most laps out of everybody when it comes to the race. Vivacqua still provisional pole position. Six thousandths of a second ahead of Colin Karasani. Vivacqua, 37.231 is provisional pole. Karasani by six thousandths of a second is in second. Daniel Gregor is in third. Kalhalper fourth, who's then got Ricky Capo, who was up to fifth, even though, even though there was a trip through the gravel. He's now down to sixth, actually, as Almeida improves, goes up to a P5. And Capo is green, green here. This would be a miraculous lap time here, as I think he might get held up by Wallace. And indeed, Taylor Uberhaus having a little battle here. A bit of slipstream to work with. And maybe this could work in his favour. Capo then, about to come across the line. 